Three case studies showing ICT supporting hard to teach topics in secondary English. Using a visualizer camera to show pupils' work to the whole class. Using discussion threads to study the GCSE poetry anthology. And making video trailers based on a set book. We're going to think about that list we had, aren't we? We're going to have that list of... At Easingwold School in Yorkshire, English teacher Philip Grosset uses a simple overhead visualiser camera to display material to the whole class. This is a, a visualiser and it, it's, put simply, it's a camera on a stick. Um, it, it plugs into a, a projector. Uh, it can plug into a laptop as well, but that's not the way I've used it in this setup. It allows me to, to project anything, any object, an exercise book, an uh, artefact, an object, so I can grab an exercise book and I can present it, we can talk about it, we can analyse it together. Um, I was hit by an icy heat, so I think I'll have that. What we're doing today is, is uh, we're trying to turn a piece of prose into a piece of poetry. The cold clawed up my face like a provoked tiger because it kind of fits in with the rest to die a bit. Brilliant, OK. Um, and we can discuss some of the word choices, I can get my pen out, I can start highlighting, uh, questioning things, suggesting alternatives, and together we can, we can make changes to a text uh, in a way which is quick, doesn't have to be planned, it's spontaneous, and which I think helps to engage children in the, in the drafting process. And you can put minus 30, comma, an icy heat, so you like say... Any text can become an interactive text, I think that's the key benefit, certainly in English, uh, to the, to the visualiser. Have you got something lovely for us? <laughs> there we go. Um, I chose all of them because they all sort of tie in together with all snow and um, the fact that the person is sort of on their own in the middle of this, like, snowy sort of place. Brilliant. Um, you don't tell us that you opened up the tent, you don't tell us you stepped outside, you don't tell us you looked around, you just kept the bits which had to do with mood and feelings. The particular hard to teach bit um, is, is that process of drafting uh, because uh, a, a typical problem that students have is, is looking at a finished piece and thinking, well, they can't get there. They can't get all the way to that wonderful finished piece. Um, or they make a first attempt at writing and, and they get stuck. They think that's it. They can't think how to change it. What have you got so far? Are you worried about it making sense? Well, first of all, don't, because don't, you don't need to worry about it making sense. Put down Fast and Furious Wind. What might go next? You might not use all of them, so if you don't like Rosy Red Nose, because you don't think it fits with the other things, just leave it out. Okay. I don't know whether it fits together or not. Okay. Uh, is it easier if you just pick three or four lines and don't worry about the rest of them? Footprints made a slight imprint in the smooth snow. That would be a lovely way to finish it, wouldn't it? So why don't you try that? Right. OK, what have we got there? We've got uh, the blanket of night, inching across the sky, stretching for miles and miles, cheeks burning red. I felt so alone. Silence. Super, Katie, really well done. I felt that putting the silence like that was going to be quite... was quite a good idea, because it, it's the only one that's bold, so it's like alone. Mm -hmm. And when it's silent, most of the time you're alone. Absolutely, so putting the word silence on its own. What I might do, actually, Katie, if it's all right, mm -hmm. can I make a few changes? Yeah. We might mess around with punctuation. I felt so alone, silence. Now, if we want to really... The main role of the visualiser in, the, in this lesson is to, to open up that drafting process. Uh, so it makes that whole drafting process much more interactive. It opens up that thought process um, and it gives them ideas for how they can then go and redraft and change things. And it gets over that barrier that once something's committed to paper, it's permanent. It isn't. It should be a process of change, and I think the visualiser helps to encourage that. What else could we do? Anyone, anyone else has got a suggestion? What could we do with the layout of the poem, maybe? I might have put, you know, where the towering mountains bit. Mm -hmm. um, she's got quite a lot of long lines in it, like, next to each other. Mm -hmm. And you could maybe even it out by putting, like, towering mountains, mountains, then you could, on the next line, put in front of me. That's a nice idea. So we, we, might, we might have some other shorter sentences. Um, we might put some space 
you know, before and after this, maybe, if we're laying it out. It's not a big thing, but we might um, put some space in. Yeah, we might have some other shorter centres beforehand. Um, so, yeah, really good idea. Excellent. It's quite light, the bit at the start, because it's... Uh, where it says, I stepped up the tre um, stepped out of the trench in which I slept, I inhaled a cold musty air. It has quite a good rhythm to it. And then I decided to add my breath simmered up the ice infected slope because it sets this, the feeling of travel and what the um, landscape's like. Because if the breath's simmering in front, it's going to be cold. And after wilderness, it's like got a dot, dot, dot. Then it's as I continued on my journey to like the finishing touch in a way. OK, so we've got a bit of suspense there, haven't we? Treacherous. No signs of being able to stop. Fading away until nothing is left. An unfamiliar stench. Stop. Tears rolling down my cheek. Pain. Right, it's very uh, mysterious and enigmatic. Uh, what, tell us about some of the choices you've made, Emma. Well, I put the stop because she was, like, the poem was, like, going on about how bad it is. So, like, it's just, like, stop, like, stop everything that it's saying. Like... <laughs> OK. If that makes sense. Again, do you mind if I scribble, Emma? No, that's fine. I like scribbling. Treacherous, no signs of being able to sleep. Uh, stop. Fading away until nothing is left. That line itself is brilliant. Um, what about this line? What about this one line, one word line, stop? We could move that to the end, couldn't we? So maybe that's something to think about changing. Yeah. Cutting, changing, adding something to. Um, so there's things we can do to carry on tweaking this. Yeah. Um, I think it's good because, like, if they've emphasised a word, you can see how they've done it, and you can see the other commas and all the punctuation that they've used, rather than just the way that they say it. You can read it as well. I think students do come to enjoy having their work shared and critiquing each other's work, but it, it is a skill that needs to be developed, uh, and ideally, the, the visualiser becomes embedded in day-to-day -day teaching, so they get used to it, uh, they know how it works, and they get used to the idea that their work at any point could be displayed and could be shared with the whole group. Uh, and so it's a process of coaching, I think. Uh, but you know, the beauty of the visualiser is, from a technical point of view, it's not very difficult to use, and it's also the kind of technology that can be used without completely replanning what you already do. Do you want to come out and read it? Stick under the camera so we can see it. Here, so yeah, wherever you want to, wherever you can see it, Ebony, yeah? Yeah. Silence. No one in sight for miles. Freezing snow burned. Coldness shooting up my spine like a thousand crocodile jaws. <laughs>
Perhaps it's really hot words. It's, it's far more fluid. Pink, it's creative. Orange. And they're actually doing the thinking. She's I'm simply the, the facilitator. So from that point of view, the, the hands-on approach and the shift fun approach, the informal side of it, means that um, there's a whole range of being collaborative that people who would never have spoken to somebody else in the classroom or even questioned them. It's about um, whether the mother's, it was a mother's fault that her son disappeared. And it's, it's just started at the moment. But um, I'm going to try and argue with this person here. It's about a mother losing her son, and the question that we're discussing discussing is if the mother, if the son of the mother, is actually as good as she makes him out to be, because she actually glorifies him in this poem. But we, but he left her, so could he have perhaps done something bad to make him leave? Some students are wiki warring about several poems at the same time. <laughs> well, everyone's just ganging up on us because I'm. Um, in babysitting, these three here are ganging up on us, and on um, digging, them two over there are just ganging on us, but I think we'll hold our own against them. In this poem, it's about how a lady is with a like, babysitting a baby, and um, she doesn't love the baby, but they're saying she does have feelings for the baby, but I believe that she doesn't have feelings for the baby. She cares more about how she is doing than the baby. But, so I was wiki warring with Alex, and I noticed that he, he's pretty much accepted that I've beaten him in the wiki war because he's contradicted his earlier statement saying that um, Healy's pen is better than uh, his father's and grandfather's shovels, but then he's later said that they are equal, which I, which I stated to him. So he's accepted that he's lost, really. Tom is studying, <coughs> he's going to the uh, digging against Alex, and uh, I'm going for the field mouse with Bailey. And we've been monitoring that while we've been attacking other people's poems. So Alex uh, just responded, uh, so uh better let's go see. And check that. Is that that's her digging? The topics highlighted in purple are those under discussion and um, there's been sixty views on the page that me and Alex are discussing. Thirteen replies and Alex has just replied just now. I have not lost this wiki war. I believe you have not seriously read the poem and what it represents, as it is all about his ad admiration for, for his father and grandfather when, they, when he was young and how now he's doing greater things than them. He's contradicted his previous statement. And I'm just going to, I'm going to talk about how, yes, I agree with Alex about the memories of how he admires his father and grandfather when they were young, but I think there's an equal, um, equal mentions of um, Heaney's pen and literature and his father and grandfather's shovel. But you've got one little thing you've got to look at, the very second line, the squat pen rests snug as a gun, that simile. Why do you think he's using the word gun, like a cannon? What's he doing that the shovel didn't do? Attacking. What? The, uh, the English. And like, I, suppose he's bringing, I suppose he's bringing up the imagery of the IRA. So do you think that Alex could be correct? I know, I know you'd hate to admit it. I don't, I don't like to admit it. I'm going to try and get out of it somehow. <laughs> <laughs> I, I simply pointed out a simple simile he might want to look at that might prove you were right. I'm winning this wiki war, so that's all that matters. You're going to win? Yeah. Come on, Alex. Alex, you've already lost Alex, I'm with you. <laughs> this one is about politics, isn't it? Is it? Yeah. yeah the, um, Easter Irish 1998, thing. the Irish thing. How about you put in post a, post a message or a, a subject? Post a message. Is this poem obviously political? And then we'll see if anybody else cups up it. And over the other side of the room, this question soon gets a response. I've just opened up a, another argument, so we're doing three at the moment, eh? and I've opened up the argument against those doing difficult births. Um, there's one of um, a religious like um, interpretation of the resurrection of Jesus, um, a political um, interpretation of the Northern Ireland peace process, and uh, one simply just of a nature interpretation of how a sheep is giving birth to a lamb. Three replies, easy. I'm not worried about spelling punctuation, this thing. I believe that this poem has three layers about the East End and the rebirth of Christ, the peace treaty being signed at Belfast and the birthing of the Lamb. But why not just talk together as a class? 
I think um, if you, if you actually discuss it on the on the wiki page, it helps to uh, everyone later after the wiki for war is finished can read through the notes, pick up different people's opinions, and this helps them revise for exams. Um, when we did Catherine, me and Aston before, um, we got set you, um, the actual poem of Catherine, and then we did a wiki war on it, but. Um, I didn't understand it until after we had a wiki war on it, so that's quite useful because I didn't understand it at all. You get to weigh up other people's opinions and yeah. you kind of go into the poem into more depth if there's more of you. At the end of the day, Carol looks through one of the wiki threads. This one's got comments made the other day. 211, uh, 212, 213, 213. Several people around the room are all discussing this one issue simultaneously. You couldn't get that in a class because in a classroom only one person can put their hand up at a time and you can only just do speaking and listening that way. This way, everyone's got a voice and you can see there's 90 responses on this one thing alone. And it's, uh, you can see a lot of flow of activity at 234, 246, etc. And then you find that they've gone out of my lesson because that ends at 2.35 and they're, they're still at it somewhere else and they're carrying on and they've got loads of quotations in here. He says, right Lydia, let's settle this. And he goes on, quotation, quotation, quotation all the way through. And he says at the end, yeah, just a few. Yeah, you got owned. And that is going on at 5.41, the same day. So obviously it's carrying on way beyond the classroom. And that wasn't set homework. That was simply because they had unfinished business. So what are the benefits of using this technology? The benefit was that, uh, is that afterwards they can go home and in a few weeks' time when they've got their mark, they can then revise it at leisure and they can see how the thought process has actually worked. They can then see the connections between other poems, connections they wouldn't have made. And they like listening in to visual conversations. It was visual because they remember seeing it on the screen and that had massive benefits because on average the boys went from a C to a grade A, in two whole grades. They're managing to, to create something and it's that creative process that's the difference. It's not simply evaluating or regurgitating knowledge, it's about you creating and that's, the, that's the, the difference between teaching of yesteryear and teaching of the millennium, the new millennium, because it's now making connections. Web 2 enables that. You couldn't do it any other way. Year 9 pupils at Nine Style School in Birmingham are making video trailers based on a scene from their set book, Dr Jekyll and Mr Hyde. It was thinking around how to use ICT and um, digital media to make a subject which has been traditionally quite hard to teach easier to access. And I think by taking the form of trailers for a computer game, which is a form that students are obviously very familiar with and have a good understanding of the conventions of, and then extrapolating a text which they maybe find quite challenging and making the one into the other, I think that process that they go through, I think the IT encourages them because it helps them think a little bit more creatively. Um, it also builds on skills that students have got. Each group will have 30 minutes to shoot a trailer for a gothic video game based on the murder of Sir Danvers Carew. But whatever they shoot must be based on a solid understanding of the text. What you need to do now in your groups, you're going to... So English teacher Lisa Lockley checks out their grasp of setting, days. character and, and plot. You... Plot is just a posh word for what? What do we mean by plot? The plot of this chapter. Xavier? Um, what's happening in the story? Fantastic. The, the, the story, really, the narrative, what's going on. And how can I tell that you've read and understood Jekyll and Hyde really well? What could you use? You can include quotes into your, into your game trailer. Fantastic. Not just include quotes, but what's... Okay, so plot. We're focusing them on Jekyll and Hyde, isolating quotes, in order for them to be able to explain and reflect upon what they made, how they made it, and why they made it the way they did. Oh, this bit? Yeah. Is that but the same yeah, bit you're looking never for? never a word and yeah, seem to little... So we need some more describing on the characters. Yeah. This is the plot, and this is where uh, Hyde kills Karu. 
the moon shine on his face. And why have you selected that one? Why is that one important? Uh, because it's it, it's like shows that the street's got like um, it's moonlit. And what atmosphere does that create? Uh, like mysterious. Thing. Fantastic, brilliant. Well done. Although the fog rode over the city in the small hours, the early part of the night was cloudless <laughs> and the lane which the maid's window overlooked was brilliantly lit by the full moon. Good. And why is that a, why is that a good one, Amy, do you think? Because of the fog sets like a gothic atmosphere. A gothic atmosphere. Brilliant. Well done. Four minutes. They need to be stuck on the board. Four minutes. <laughs> Take that one back for me. Next, they prepare storyboards to show exactly what shots they want to take and what action each shot will contain. But he said you can't have a bird's eye view either. Where? You can't have, you can't have the top of your head because um, they said they've got the right camera on you. Does it? But they have a missing one, so she's like about. You should be able to get an angle of you fainting, but not from the top, so it'd be like from the side. We need to delete some scenes, and, like remake some scenes, like um, that one and that one. Like that one, we need to take out because we've got the police cars, and police cars don't right. exist. And that one, we just need to take the police cars out and put like the inspector standing over the body, looking at the body. Then some rehearsal to refine the action they're going to shoot and to update their storyboards. And then I don't hear you. Yeah. I carry on looking for him, but he's already yeah. left. Yeah. And then that should be the end, and then we go back out of the game. And then I say, carry on I say, wow, well, you're Inspector, Inspector, um, I know where the body went. Yeah. Hello? Hello? Oh, that's what I'm going to <gasps> Then we'll have text, we'll do that in editing, and then somewhere in between there we'll have the beat scene, and then we'll have that part. And then you'll be walking away with blood coming out of my head, it's more blood, and I'll have Jekyll and Hyde, and then you walk over it. Okay, you didn't, you didn't get that right? Yeah. Oh, sorry, sir. Ah! Here we are in the drama studio. What we've done, we've set up a green screen so the students can film against it. The idea is that when students film their piece of drama, we can replace the background with any images they need for that scene. In this case, it's going to be street scenes of London, they're going to be inside houses, um, but it could be absolutely anything. OK, that's what you see, that's what yeah. the lens will see. Yep. You need to make sure all the action takes place within the boundaries yeah, of the green. within the green. OK, so what's the first shot? Um, In their allotted time slot, the pupils explain to the IT staff what they want to shoot. Okay. No, this one, this one here, that's meant to be blood. So where's this camera in? Do we need to be closer or above? Closer From the above. side? Closer, no. Far, closer, and then the other one's closer. The background scenery will be added later in the editing to replace the area of green. Action. <gasps> we could have him just go like that, then that would be it. OK. There's a wall, and we're off screen, and there's our shadows. I'm lying on the floor, and he's just gone like that to finish me off. Oh, yeah. We're doing that bit now. You zoom into your eyes. That's when you're, like, at your most deadliest form. Do you get what I mean? Should I keep the mask on? Yeah. But make sure your eyes are showing. The IT staff then help the pupils edit what they've shot. OK, what we're doing is we're capturing the footage you've just recorded. You click Start Import and it does it for you. But it captures at real time, so the time it took to record will be the same time it takes to capture to the computer. Do you want this part where he's walking? Yeah. Yeah, yeah, yeah I get the end part. I think... Uh, I'll get rid of all this part. Yeah, I think. Yeah. And then, so, there, yeah? Yep. OK. So we'll get rid of this part here. Yeah. Up to... No, no, I think we did two oh, of them. That, that was the one. That was the one. Like yeah. So I'm just going to stick all of this on a timeline now. Two, three, four, five, six, seven clips. Here are the pictures we currently have. Is that one okay? Uh, this is where the green back cloth is replaced by the background of their choice, such as the Victorian street where the attack took place. That's cool. That was his language. Or the window from which the maid saw the whole thing. Oh yeah. A murderer is among us. A bad deed has been done. 
Jack and Hyde, the video game, coming soon. A murderer is among us. A murderer is among us. A bad deed has been done. Bad deed has been done. That's cool. Jack and Hyde, the video game, coming soon. Coming soon. Coming soon. That's good. Right, then. Can't make too late. You're going to act snake. Something towards you, like a snake. That sounds like it would be in the jungle, doesn't it? The pupils then choose some horror music from an online library where, for a few pence, you can download tracks that are cleared for copyright. Sound like you're in a dark place. A few final bloody touches. And some suitably horrific lettering. The process looks very time consuming, but I think the method by which we get to the final product is very, very effective and by asking students to think about what they already know when we start out with a project and working around a driving question and having an artifact that they create, I think it keeps the students very focused. And I also think that it makes them responsible for their own learning and empowers them. And here's a selection from the students' finished Jekyll and Hyde video game trailers. They can't do it without making judgments about the language in the text, about the, you know, the, the narrative in the text, and without deciding what's important and what the audience really needs to see in order to create meaning. I was a bit nervous perhaps about doing it, but once you saw the enthusiasm of the students and they were able to say, Stevenson has done this because, Stevenson has done this because it makes me feel, and they knew that by understanding the language they'd be able to make something actually really meaningful for them, transforming it, it, it eased my fears a little bit and eased my nerves because actually it was really worthwhile doing. Hello.